Welcome to American Dreams, Keys to Success, with your host, Alan Olson. He's a Bay Area native. He's a successful businessman, well-connected, and a friend to all. He's been published and quoted in various media outlets. And he's been honored for his philanthropic contributions. Ain't that America, home of the free, yeah. Little pink houses for you. Apple pie, baseball, and now here's All-American Alan Olson. Welcome back. I have here today with me John Mathon. John is a serial entrepreneur in Silicon Valley. Welcome to today's show, John. Thank you, Alan. So, uh, John, can you tell me a little bit about your background and uh, you know, your primarily software? That's right. I, uh, I grew up just fascinated with software and computers and uh just spent every waking minute and uh, studying and learning about them and just, you know, it was a passion of mine. I was one of those lucky people that knew really early in my life, like what I wanted to do and, and what I was passionate about and um, I wouldn't let anybody stop me. So that was, that was easy. I, I have kids, so I can see like what the difference is between somebody who has you know, sometimes <laughs> that kind of passion and other people who don't kids give us that clarity right, yeah. right. <laughs> um so i uh i didn't know where i would be i it turns out i've become uh in the software industry uh sort of a messaging expert the i was uh the person who invented something called publish subscribe and patented the uh the notion with a company called tibco which was one of the companies that i started uh also started some companies like slam dunk networks which was a messaging oriented company and then uh my own company mathon systems which uh was around security and messaging so um i've gotten that specialization but i believe it or not i all started that from a dream i had one day i always was passionate about starting companies and uh, i had a dream one night it was a colorful dream that just i imagined this thing that I went to my uh, best friend the next day and said, we have to do this. And we started Tibco and that's how I got going. And uh, it's a, it's a terrific experience that I've had over these years, starting companies and uh, working. So, so let me ask, so you, you come from the concept of, you have a dream, you're inspired of, of, of a new technology, uh, innovating something that hasn't been done before. How did you take it from the the dream to the the you know or the concept to the actual company two of you got together and said let's do this company right that is a a, a process that has changed over time at the time i was doing that there weren't a lot of software companies and convincing people to do a software company was a difficult thing to start with okay. and uh fortunately with my friend uh uh, he had a lot of business background, and so I was the technologist. He was the business guy. We kind of together were a good fit. What I realize is, first off, you need a diversity of people with different skills that can bring, you know, everything that's needed in it. And that's one of the things when I look at new companies to invest in or ideas, I make sure that, you know, do you have the right set of people? Because a bunch of guys who have a great idea but don't have – uh, the sales experience or the business experience in other ways will not succeed. They so need. How, how did you sell that? You, you, two of you coming together say, "Hey, do you want to come join us?" And was it easy? Uh, it wasn't hard to sell the idea. It was a very powerful idea that uh, that we had. So it really wasn't hard to sell the idea to individuals to join the company. It was hard to sell the idea to VCs. It turned out at the time, uh, and uh, the. You know, that was something that we struggled with for actually years before we actually got funding for uh, for that company, believe it or not. And then now it's a billion dollar company with, uh, you know, sales over a billion dollars a year and, and it's very successful today and well known in the industry. And half of the trading systems in the world are based on the technology. It's pretty impressive. Uh, the success we had. Uh, but when we first went out with the idea, nobody even would accept the idea that we could do this uh and so yeah you have to fight to make your idea real but uh on the other hand you can fight on an idea that isn't real i've had that experience too where i've taken i've had an idea thought it was significant and had trouble uh convincing people ultimately that it was going to be successful and then and then had to fight and fight uh and decide when you have to quit when when do you realize that an idea you have really isn't the best idea 
So, John, John, we have to take a quick break. We're visiting here today with John Mathon. He's the founder of Tipco, which ended up being a billion-dollar company. We'll be right back after these messages. Protecting your family's health and welfare is a sacred trust. At Greenstein Rogoff Olson Company, we know that sound financial planning will protect them now and in the future. We're certified public accountants with tax services for the highly successful and voted best CPA firm in the USA. Greenstein Rogoff Olson Company will help you manage your financial affairs so you can focus on what's really important in life. Broco helping you along the way. Apple pie, baseball, and now here's All American Alan Olson. Welcome back. We've been visiting here today with John Mathon. He is the founder of Tipco Software, which ended up being a billion dollar company. Uh, John, it was before the break, we we're talking about. Uh, primarily, it was your passion that kept driving this idea to create and expand this company. Yeah, uh, Tipco uh, was one of the most successful companies in the finance sector and transformed, actually, a lot of the financial uh, trading around the world. And uh, that was an incredible experience to go through uh, working all around the world, changing everything. And, and it's something to see... Uh, thousands of people making lots of money and changing, you know, trading around the world using your technology. And, and that's one of the great satisfying things of an entrepreneur is seeing people actually using your ideas. And today that is, uh, that's so realizable with the cloud and with the internet. Well, let's, let, let's move into the cloud and, and, uh, because, you know, your real time messaging platform, the technology that Tipco was started when back in the eighties, uh, it was around eighty six right. yep. or so. And, uh, yep. it, but, but now we have something entirely different called this cloud. And I'm sure that the entrepreneurs would like to know, uh, your thoughts and perspective on how this changes the way that we live and what you forecast into the future here. I, I believe like, I think many other people that the cloud is one of the biggest productivity gains that the United States and, and the world will have in, in terms of uh, computers and in terms of our whole industry. Uh, the cloud represents a transformative experience in terms of how businesses are run. Today, a lot of businesses still purchase a lot of hardware and infrastructure. They hire a lot of people to do management of all that infrastructure. They even have a lot of software developers who write applications Many, many companies do this and have done this and have a legacy of all of this stuff. The cloud represents a way to take what is really not a core competency of most businesses. The vast majority of businesses around the world and in, especially in the United States are not technology core competence and they don't, uh, they're not specially good at doing these things. So the cloud enables us to take all of that technology stuff and put it into centralized entities that can uh, better manage more effectively, more efficiently. If you looked at a typical company, vast majority of its, if, of its technological resources would be underused most of the time. In the cloud, companies can leverage those, those uh, assets in ways that uh, are just so much more efficient and better for the environment, better for everything. But... What it also has enabled, and I think this is the most exciting thing for entrepreneurs, is it has enabled us to start companies much cheaper and to grow them in a linear fashion with revenues, which changes the entire equation about how people start companies. And this is, for me, means it's one of the most exciting times to be starting a company uh, in, the bay, in the Bay or anywhere, I guess, Bose. The cloud enables us so that companies do not need to create large amounts of infrastructure they don't need large amounts of capital to start unlike the past you can you can rent equipment and the communication services everything you need as you need them and grow them as your revenue grows and as your customer base grows you can also using the cloud you can do what's called the SaaS model you can do your software so that it's offered as a service across the internet to, to various people and incrementally increase your revenues and prove your product without having to do the direct sales approach that we had to do for so many years. 
The direct sales approach required hiring lots of salespeople, having them travel. The expenses associated was huge. What all this means is that an entrepreneur can start a company cheaper. They can keep more. As a result, they don't need as much VC money. They don't need as much investment capital, which means they keep more of the company for themselves, which then translates into whatever exit or however they grow the company, a, a bigger benefit for the entrepreneur. So this is really, in my view, a golden age for for entrepreneurs and we're seeing amazing uh this is like such an exciting time because for instance you can see uh companies that are being bought now for 10 times sales in this in, in this environment uh there's lots and lots of these SaaS type companies that are just being acquired by all the big guys who are trying to uh you know move around and and acquire these resources before they uh before you know the market is is capitalized by everybody else so um, there's opportunities for liquidity. There's opportunities for investment. And uh, we're seeing VC firms change the way they do their business. They're not investing as much money. They're investing in more companies uh, and smaller ways. So it's an it's incredibly exciting time. You know, I, I recently had dinner with uh, uh, Eric Schmidt of, of Google and uh, Paul Hennessy, Stanford University. And, and uh, Eric's vision for the future was 6 billion Android phones around the world. Uh, what do you think about you know five years from now and and where do you see things going? Well, as far as mobile communications, there's no question that we're moving to a totally mobile world where uh, lots more and more of our everyday life is is uh, captured inside of these electronic devices. Uh, the cloud gives us that ability to move like everything. Uh, I, one of the things that's kind of fascinating for me is just a small detail, but when I would travel in the past, I had to take along with me just all this electronic stuff that I needed and uh, discs and entertainment and things for the plane, et cetera. What I found today is that, you know, in a single phone, I can carry with me practically everything from books and music to my life, uh, everything I need to do. And that's made me more able to travel easily uh, around the world or to just uh, travel lighter, which then translates into, uh, you know, a more uh, a feel, feeling of a greater freedom. You know, it's just a, it's it, amazing how these things are changing our lives in just so many ways. So the whole concept of the business process uh, and getting to implementation to market has, has clearly changed. Uh, it's a lot cheaper. Markets are more readily accessible. So it, it seems that, you uh, you know, what the future holds is that you have to continue to innovate and differentiate yourself from what everyone else is doing out there. That is a, that's, you know, one of the things in the last segment we started to talk about, which is um, when you have an idea, how do you identify if that idea is really valuable? The VCs now have positioned themselves in a way that they can fund lots of different things and then see which ones succeed. If you're starting a company, you have to somehow identify customers and, uh, you need to you need to create campaigns and, and mechanisms hey, to John we need to get, take a quick break we're here with John Mathon he's a serial entrepreneur here in uh, Silicon Valley we've been talking about cloud technology and the future of software we'll be right back after these messages nothing's more important than spending time with your family at Greenstone Rogoff Olson Company we're trusted advisors to the highly successful our goal is to help you find the right strategy to protect your wealth for yourself and those you love. Kids! Why do I feel like I've just had an audit? As trusted advisors to the highly successful, we'll make sure you don't lose your shirt. Apple pie, baseball, and now here's All American Alan Olson. Welcome back. We're here today visiting with John Mathon. John is one of these serial entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley. He's the founder of Tipco Software, which is a financial trading platform for the industry and real time messaging used throughout the world. And uh, and now he's been um, working in the the field of cloud computing. So before the break, we're talking about. Uh, you know, taking an idea to implementation has a lot to do with the passion of the individual. And we were uh, 
we're, we're touching on the points of cloud computing and what it means to us. And John had mentioned that uh, a lot easier to take companies, um, you know, into implementation at, at lower cost because of the, uh, the ease and accessibility of uh, technology today. So, John, when we look in the, into the future, um, we talked about this, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the cloud computing, but I want to look at this platform of uh, quantum computing. Uh, you know, it, it's a concept that has not yet been uh, implemented. It's, it's still in the concept form. There are some companies that are doing this. Uh, but what, what's your take on the quantum computing? Well, I'm not as enthusiastic as some about the quantum computing. Maybe can you, maybe for, for the listeners, can you kind of give an idea of the, the concept? What is quantum computing first? So uh, the idea of quantum computing is using essentially entanglement and, and the concept of large numbers of uh, entangled particles being able to uh, operate as a, as a virtual computer. And the way these things, uh, the applications of these things that we have, we have, thought of mostly revolve around computing a lot of the same things over and over. And one of the, one of the classic applications for something like that is in security, uh, security d kinds of applications, for instance, code breaking or code creation or things along. The I lines haven't of, heard that before. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it is, it's one of the key applications. It's probably one of the reasons why the government likes to fund this stuff. Uh, and, there are a lot of applications. I'm not sure uh, in the end where the real, uh, you know, how these applications will will end up uh, happening on the on a quantum computing platform. But I think you know the it has certain applicability to certain applications, and and uh, I I don't find it as interesting right now. I think ultimately it could be uh, amazing, but there's probably a lot of different ways we can go with our computing platforms in the future. So it's know, still too soon, really. To to say that we're really at the stage where we have practical applications for quantum computing other than breaking codes. Other than breaking codes <laughs> and things like that, I think that's the, the main thing people are looking at for that. So what do you see the next, the, the next big idea coming on the forefront in, in the cloud world? Well, the one thing uh, that I really focus on is my interest about the cloud is that once most applications and data is in the cloud, and this is scary to some people. When I talk to some people about the cloud, they get concerned about the concentration of information and and things in the cloud. Um, I think, you know, like anything, we have to figure out how to solve all those problems. But, um, you know, regardless of that, it does present opportunities as well. And one of the big opportunities that is my specialty in particular, and I think about a lot, is messaging. And what that means is once you have uh, all of this information and all these applications and services in the cloud, you start to think about how to leverage those amongst each other to create uh, new computing platforms or ideas or applications. I mean, a simple one that, uh, that the government, for instance, might be very interested in is if they could collect, for instance, all the information on sales uh, of any particular thing or all things uh, instantly across the cloud and know in immediate terms exactly how the economy was doing from all the information they could gather in the cloud, that would possibly enable a quantum leap in our ability to manage our economy. Uh, there are a lot of applications for uh, investors and other people to learn about what's happening in the cloud and not just invest in the cloud, but it, learn how to invest in businesses, how to affect your stock trading, et cetera, just by knowing how things are operating in the cloud. So I'm looking at messaging in particular as a particularly interesting area of the cloud because I like the idea of how do we get messages around in the cloud between applications, between users and applications to create higher value. You know, it's, it seems that with the, uh, with, with all this instant information today, uh, the, the, the volatility of the markets have become much, much less, you know, that, that, that uh, they, they trade more and more accurate information and rather than reactionary. Yeah. I think, uh, over time our, we are learning how to how to operate the system and, and what all the, the nooks and crannies of the system are. And, and hopefully over time we will learn how to, you know, prevent a lot of these uh, ups and downs that we have. Um, but the d economy, it, it does baffle me how we swing from one uh, overreaction to another at times like the most recent, you know, uh, 
problems we've been having. Hey, John, it's been a pleasure having you here today on the show. We've been visiting with John Mason, one of the serial entrepreneurs here in Silicon Valley and the founder of messaging and the financial industry for the software. Thank you so much. Alan. Thank you.